Hi, my name's Jonathan Hicks. I'm back at the Dice Cup, and this evening I'm joined by Steve. And we've just finished playing Yinch. This is one of the two player abstract GIF series games. And Steve's going to explain how to play. Um, so the idea is you're trying to get five in a row three times. You're going to try to get five of your colour in a row. So if White had one there, White had five in a row. And when you get five in a row, what you do is you remove the five in a row from the board. That's gone. And you remove one of your discs. So if you'll notice that White has five discs at the start of the game, as does Black, White might decide, I've got five in a row, I'm also going to promote that piece. This effectively, once you've done this three times, you'll win the game, but whenever you do that, you effectively use one of these discs. And these discs are important um, because they're going to dictate effectively where you can place your counters. So on your turn, you're going to take one of these actually quite nice uh, double-sided counters and you're going to put it in one of your rings. So let's say it's Black's turn, I'm going to put it in one of my rings. And then Black can move this ring as far as it wants to, with some rules in any direction. So black can try and go that way or that way or that way or that way or that way. Other discs will stop it, so black can't actually go that way, but pieces won't. So black can move there, or it can move there, or there, or it can have allow it's allowed one jump. So black can move here and then jump over all of these because there's an empty space on the side. And every disc that black jumps over reverses even it will turn black ones white and white ones black, so it will kind of reverse other things around. Um, and then it's white's go. So white might decide on their turn to do that, and then jump that way, and put that one back, and that one back. And you're going to keep going like that until you've got five in a row. Black's close to get five in a row here, but if black went there to try and get the fifth one, it would flip those two over. Oh dear, it's now not close anymore. And you do that until um, effectively someone's got three points or three five in a row, and they win the game. All right, so what do we think? Uh, this is my favourite of the series. Um, it depends what mood I'm in, is which one I'd rather play, but this, if I had to pick my you know, my favourite opponent or something, this would be the one I play. I just think there's more strategy in this than any of the other ones in the series. I really like the fact that if you get five in a row, in fact, White's actually got five in a row here, when you get your five in a row, you remove one of your discs. Brilliant, yeah, I'm one third of the way to winning, but I have one fewer disc on the board, and discs are really good. They're not just good because they can tell you where you can place your new ones, they also allow you to block your opponent in, because your opponent can't, can't get past your discs. It's really important to effectively control the centre of the board just so that your opponent can't do this massive flip because your disc's in the way. You're blocking them getting their five in a row, or you're just blocking them moving their discs and they have to kind of eat around the edge, and it's just not as effective. Um, if you like Othello, you'll love this, and if you think if you like abstract strategy games, you'll love this as well. Rating out of 10? This is my favourite one. I'd probably say 8.5 out of 10. All right. I'm not so keen on this one. I do like the Gip series of games generally. I'm a big fan of Devon in particular. Uh, this one, as Steve says, there is more strategy to it. And I just find it's a bit of a brain strain. I sort of sit there thinking, well, I could do this or I could do that. That thing about you not only flip over your opponent's pieces, but you will also flip over your own pieces to become the, your opponent's pieces as well. It means there's so many different combinations you've got to think about. And it's very hard to picture what the board is going to look like when you move this piece or move that piece. It very much benefits from replay. If you play it lots of times, you will become a lot better at it and whitewash somebody who hasn't played it very much, as Steve has just whitewashed me. So it's a good game. And as he says, if you like these kind of abstract games, this is a very solid game. There's lots of strategizing you can do if that's your cup of tea. Me personally, I think I'll be on a 5 out of 10 for this one. Alright, thanks for watching. That was Yinch.